In this episode, you're going to hear a lot about trees because that's what these parks are all about. These massive sequoia trees that you see behind me. When it comes to California and national parks, there is no short supply. With nine national parks and countless state parks protecting a wonderful variety of coastal islands, deserts, volcanic lakes, towering granite outcroppings, and giant trees like redwoods and sequoias. Welcome to Sequoia National Park. I'm Alice Ford and over the next few days I'll be showing you around Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park with all the best hikes and things that you should do on a visit here. These parks are located in the Sierra Nevada mountains and have been managed as one national park since 1943. It's home to the tallest mountain in the contiguous USA, more than 260 caves, slumbering bears, amazing views, and the world's largest trees. From Los Angeles, the park is a four and a half hour drive to its southern entrance near Three Rivers, California. You will enter Sequoia's foothill regions first, which in mid-March is full of colorful wildflowers and ample places to camp, picnic, and enjoy the view. One of your first stops here as you enter Sequoia is Tunnel Rock. This is a really popular point of interest. A lot of people come here to take pictures on top of the rock, but back in the day, you used to actually be able to drive through this rock. The stay at the road actually goes around. Heading up the road from Tunnel Rock, you'll want to stop at Hospital Rock where you can see some Native American rock drawings. This is also a great place for a picnic before continuing up the road to see your first sequoia trees in Giants Forest. There are 265 caves here throughout Sequoia and Kings Canyon. They discover a new one just about every year. But there's only one that you can get tours of, which is here at Crystal Caverns. Now, normally this is open to the public and you make a reservation 48 hours in advance on the park website. But because of the fire in 2021, this is actually gonna be closed throughout the 2022 season and will be reopening in 2023. One of the big draws here at Sequoia and Kings Canyon is obviously the giant sequoia trees, one of the largest living trees on the planet. And one of the best trails to trek them out is the Big Trees Trail. The Big Trees Trail starts at the Giant's Forest Museum and meanders around the forest floor. This trail circles around Round Meadow. It's just 0.6 miles and relatively flat, which makes it great for people of all ages and abilities. If only trees could talk. Today is actually the first day this major road through the park has actually reopened. The first week this park has actually been open in about six months because of the KNP complex fire, which burned about 88,000 acres here in the park. Now, sequoia trees, just like redwoods and ponderosa pines, have a special ability to be able to keep themselves from burning. They actually reproduce from fire. So normally if there is a forest fire that affects the lower couple of feet of a forest, these giant trees are able to protect themselves and they actually release their spawns and then new trees grow in their places. But as fires become more intense, they burn longer, they burn hotter, and they hurt more of the forest. Even these massive ancient trees are at risk. This forest is the largest unlogged grove in the park and it contains an extensive network of trails from short hikes to long explorations. For most people, these immense majestic trees and the beams of sunlight that filter through the lofty branches bring a sense of peace and wonder. Some of the reasons sequoias are so good at preventing fire from taking them over is because the branches are extremely high in the air. 
The bark also has air pockets and contains little sap, which makes it very hard for fires to catch these trees on fire. Being surrounded by these giants is incredible. It's here in the giant forest where five out of the 10 largest trees on the planet live. And we're about to see America's largest. This is the General Sherman. It's the largest tree on the planet. The General Sherman spent much of 2021 wrapped in a tinfoil blanket to protect it from the fires, a long and tedious effort by fire personnel and park employees that paid off. I have found the Fountain of Youth and it's right here in this forest. Sequoia trees, they live a long time, a very long time, thousands of years. Many of the trees, are between 1,800 and 3,000 years old. They've seen the entire history of this country play out from Native Americans to European settlers, and who knows what other history they could tell if they could talk. And they've been able to live a very long time because of their unique bark and their ability to withstand fire, cold temperatures, and much more. One of the most popular trails here in the park is Moro Rock. It's about a mile and a half up a paved road and then a couple of stairs. When I say a couple, I mean a couple hundred. And then some spectacular views of the park. Something you'll notice here in the park are a lot of trees with blue marks on them. These trees are actually dead. They've been marked probably to be cut down by the park service here. They pose definitely a hazard to people. I've just now reached the bottom of the stairs here at Moro Rock. From here, it's about 400 stone steps to the top. Moro Rock has sheer drop-offs on both sides. So those with a fear of heights or not good with stairs, will want to skip this one. As you make your way up here, you're gonna to come to this viewpoint where you can see across the Great Western Divide. Now, almost all of these mountains behind me are now part of Kings Canyon and Sequoia, protected here all the way over to Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the lower 48 states. For those looking to explore the mountains, one of the best backpacking routes that goes through this area is the High Sierra Trail. It can take up to eight days, 72 miles, and includes a climb up Mount Whitney. A few more stone steps and you will reach the top of Morro Rock, which has picturesque views in all directions. If you've come over to Morro Rock, you cannot leave without a visit to Tunnel Log. Now, you've probably seen historical photos of this place. It's one of the most famous parts of Sequoia National Park is being able to drive your car through a tree. This is actually taken down in 1937. So early, early visitors to the park were able to drive their Model Ts underneath this same tree. Pretty spectacular. So if you're coming to this area, even when the road is closed, definitely walk down this little side road. It's pretty quick from Morro Rock to get over here. And in the summertime, you can take the shuttle or drive your vehicle. Continuing up the General Grants Highway towards Kings Canyon, you're gonna rise in elevation and go through some massive pine forests. And this is where you're gonna start seeing the massive devastation from these wildfires.
So the reality of this park right now is that a lot of stuff is closed, especially as you reach the higher elevations right now. My plan today was to hike to Tacopa Falls, but this entire area, including the lodge here, are closed still due to fire damage. Met some other hikers here that were also planning to do this hike and or hike to Twin Lakes. This entire area is closed. Not sure when it's gonna reopen, but keep that in mind when you're planning a trip up here to Sequoia because there are gonna be trail closures and road closures from time to time as they repair and let some of the habitat here repair itself after last year's fires. Trails are closed for a reason, especially right now in this park. It is because of dangerous conditions from falling trees, from landslides and mudslides, and the Park Service, because this park just reopened, hasn't been able to come in here and fully assess all of these areas or clean up the trails, which is why some of them are still closed. Now, something else you should know when coming to national parks is that whatever you see here in the national parks, you can't take home with you. Yesterday I saw a woman taking out some of the giant pine cones from either ponderosa pines or sequoia trees that are about this big. And while it would be great to see that on your mantle, it's actually highly illegal to take things like this out of our national parks. So please leave what you see in the national parks, take nothing and leave no trace. You bring trash into the park. If you bring food into the park, please take it back with you. And especially in these parks, you need to be aware of the bear safety. So please pay attention to the signage. Don't leave out food that's open in your vehicles. If you're camping or going on long day hikes and are gonna have food, put it in some of the bear boxes that are located all throughout the park here and most of all just respect this land you know yesterday I saw two women smoking cigarettes standing next to some of the sequoia trees standing on a bed of pine needles it's just completely incomprehensible to me that people have so little common sense and so little respect for these places if you're paying to come to a national park and see this beautiful landscape Please come with respect and love and pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the rules and please follow them as well. We all wanna keep these places pristine for the future of this planet and for our children. As the elevation changes in the park, so does the weather. After a morning of sunshine, the snow was now falling as I neared the entrance to the General Grant Grove in Kings Canyon. Sequoias aren't just some of the largest trees on earth, but they're also the symbol of our national parks. You might notice a large tree on the national park logo, which is actually a sequoia. That's because sequoias go way back when it comes to national parks. Three out of the first four national parks ever created in America were created just to protect these massive trees. One of the areas you won't want to miss when you're coming up here to Kings Canyon is the General Grant Grove. Now this is actually the site of the first original national park here, which was designated back in 1890 to protect this grove of sequoias and the General Grant tree. The cabin behind me was once the home for some of the first park managers, but the real first inhabitants of this area were the natives of the Shoshonean language. The combination of cold temperatures and moisture bring mist into the sequoia groves in this part of the park, and it's unbelievably magical. The star of the show at the General Grant Grove is the General Grant Tree, which was actually dubbed our nation's Christmas tree in 1916 by President Coolidge. It's 268 feet tall and 107 feet around. Think of all those Christmas lights. If you need a pick-me-up after the weather changes, you can come to the Grant Grove Market, which has got everything you need for camping or being out here in the park. There's also a restaurant here and a lodge. Right now I'm in the big stumps area. You can see behind me a giant stump of a sequoia tree. Funnily enough, when Grant Grove first became a national park in the 1890s, People around the country didn't believe 
them when they said the sequoia trees were as big as they were. So they cut down a few of the trees, chopped them up, and sent them around the country to New York, to San Francisco, to Chicago, to show people just how big these trees were and to get them to come west and check them out. Being among these massive giants has been incredible. I just love exploring forests like this. And I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along to see Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. Now, there's a lot of stuff I didn't get to see here, so I look forward to coming back in the summer months when more trails are open, when this park has had a little bit more time to regenerate after last year's big fires. But I hope this gives you a little taste of some of the things you can do in the parks. If you guys are new here, please make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I've got a ton more information on not only exploring other national parks, but this one over on my blog, Alice's Adventures on Earth, and a ton more videos, not just on California national parks, but on many places all around the world. So please check out some of my other videos if you haven't watched any of them yet. I've got links down in the description for some of the relevant stuff that you can do connecting your trip over here to Sequoia, like going to Yosemite or visiting Death Valley as well. So please give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel and this video rise to the top. It helps YouTube know that you guys like this content. Don't forget to drop a comment down below. As always, I'm Alice Ford. Never stop exploring and I hope to see you guys over on my Patreon channel as well.